So I wanted to have another attempt at mastering a Sierra game on the first playthrough. In my last attempt, I was actually having a quite a good time playing Gold Rush, selling all my belongings for a 2% chance of coming back with big piles of gold, but... <laughs> Permadeath in Sierra games just isn't a viable option, but is it possible to get through a new Sierra game that you've never played before without using a walkthrough? Time for Manhunter for the Amiga. The box art, for me, looks incredible and makes some equally incredible promises. A 3D animated adventure, do you know what, I really love early 3D games and how they squeezed 3D out of systems that weren't really designed for it, always impressive. Anyway, we promised a radical departure. I guess that means we won't have any mandatory action sequences, or illogical deaths, or completely bonkers and unfair puzzles. Hang on, what's this? They finally did it! Those maniacs! They blew it up! Damn you all the- actually... That looks quite nice. The game begins with a perfectly normal everyday scene of giant eyeballs destroying a major US city. In the distant future of 2002, the orbs have taken over, enslaved mankind except for a few that have been microchipped and are responsible for tracking down the underground surviving humans, but they haven't closed down the fairground rides which was nice of them. Just because it's the post apocalypse doesn't mean you can't have a little bit of fun every now and then. You can even win prizes! That is such a terrible name. I'm pretty sure by the end of this video we can come up with something better than that. The Amiga version seems to be a port of an MS-DOS version because it's got that weird cyan magenta vibe that looks like it was drawn by Timmy Age 5. The graphics aren't bad though. You can see pretty much what everything is through this first person perspective and that's pretty much my gold standard for these kind of games. Moving around is a bit strange because you have to use the cursor keys in order to move the cursor on the screen or you can point and click where you want the cursor to be which seems really bonkers. As a manhunter we've actually been enlisted by the Eilie Cyruses to follow men into toilets. Or that's at least what this depiction on my computer seems to be showing me. We get to see him blow up a hospital, go to a church, go to a bar before finally the big moment. It's all depicted in this weird overhead wireframe graphics mode, which would be fine if that was all it was on our computer as we're tracking these people, but we actually have to play some of these mandatory action sequences in this. Yes, it's that sort of Sierra game. Mandatory action sequences so far have been everywhere, but it's very much click and move around, explore and search for clues on your own. It's a good job we're not playing permadeath mode because I was enjoying this animation and music so much they got murdered by the baby orbs. It's a good job that I'm a manhunter and not a teacher because I really can't control my pupils. I, I'm not entirely sure why these little guys are trying to kill me, maybe it's just some innate instinct, but I thought we were on the side of the orbs. Either way, the developers show up in the brown robes that we're wearing and take the mickey. It's a very specific jibe which, me which means these guys are going to show up every time we die to take make fun of us. Fair play to Manhunter though, it returns us to a moment just before we messed up and we don't have to save early save often all the time and we can just enjoy getting murdered. So every human that's left left behind is wearing these brown robes including the developers and uh, it, I mean they kept the fairgrounds open but they could have kept at least one Primark open, that's all I'm going to say. But we know what we're doing, we know where we have to go and we know what we're looking for, we actually have a quest. So we look at the guy's toe and we find he's got a tag on, we can put the name on the tag into our computer and we can identify him as a manhunter. If this game had points I reckon we'd have one point by now. It's at this moment I remember to read the manual. We've already had some copy protection right at the start of the game but it was really blatant just asking us for a word on a page. 
but there could easily be some hidden copy protection in this game and we might have already missed some of it. I'm somewhat concerned that I seem to have the Kix version, which if you don't know is like the Tesco value version of these games. And it doesn't, from what I can see, it doesn't seem to have all the different maps and bits and bobs in it that I should have. Hopefully the publishers just played the game and made sure that all the things that I need are in there. I did read the manual and I especially enjoyed the part about the Human Orb Alliance. I kind of like the idea of an orb on a middle management course. Kind of makes me want to root for these guys a little bit. Get out. Go on. I'll open the door for you, yeah? If you don't want to make it, go now, yeah? Save us all a bit of time, yeah? If you don't think you can cut it. No? Good. You finished it? No. I'm in the... After the hospital, I've immediately forgotten where we're supposed to go next anyway, so I just go to the church and play with fire for a little bit. We then visit the fair and play some games, and then we hit the bar where we play that game of knifey finger. This has so far been the most interesting part of the game. Beating the guy at knifey finger allows us to play another video game. Not the video game that we're playing, another video game that's in the video game. Why is the video game in the video game got graphics in the actual video game? You can save scum your way through this maze, but I have no idea what I've just done. I have no idea if I've done it right. Getting knifey finger wrong, the guy actually gets hold of your head, squashes it with his bare hands. The guy's got pecs coming through his robe, so you know, not surprising at all. I'm guessing at this point, the Cupid dolls, whatever they are, are related to the candles in some way, but it's not quite clear. Maybe it'll become clear the more we play. I decided to go for a big poo in the park. I'm hoping to at least meet a Ninja Turtle when I go down there. So we flush the toilet and nothing happens. Wait, maybe I got the wrong stall. I'll go back and check on my computer. Nope, it's the right stall. Maybe it just didn't go down on the first flush. You ever use one of these public toilets? They don't always go down on the first flush, so let's try again. Success! Well, now we're knee deep in other people's business. Or perhaps it's the eyeballs business. Can eyeballs poop? Do you know what? Damn this game for even making me ask that question. So it's another maze and I'm completely lost at this point. I'm picking up key cards as I go around, but what they're for I don't know and I don't know if I'm getting all of them. I suspect that maze game that's in the bar might be related to this maze that I'm in now. And if I can figure out the maze in the bar, then I'll figure out this one. Maybe I also need to figure out in which order the candles need to be lit and which way. And maybe that's related to the maze in the bar. Or maybe it's related to the Cupid dolls at the prize fair. I do manage to escape the, the poo maze though. And I find myself on a little jetty. And I get a medallion. So I at least one up the Wookiee on this one. I might just sit here and enjoy the sweet smell of poker post-apocalypse. Have a little think about what to do next. And maybe just rethink some of my life choices. I'll see you next time.